Welcome everybody, this is The Gentleman Geek. I'm your host, Malcolm Trotter, and The Gentleman Geek, we're gonna talk about all things geek uh, and just add that gentleman touch. What I mean by that is we're gonna take a philosophical angle on a lot of things that we discuss, everything from cars, movies, video games, whatever it may be, and then maybe you guys can let us know what you think we should discuss. Uh, I've got my friends here, buddy here, my brother, Matthew Trotter, uh, a.k.a. Architect, who's going to be uh, filling in and giving his insight on some of the, the things we talk about, and also my other buddy, Zach Garcia. Um, so we're going to have a, who's from uh, Biz Dev? 805 Biz 805 Dev. 805 Biz go. Dev. I like it. Let's go. Uh, so what we'll do, also co-hosting it on every episode as we continue to do this, will be a fine bottle of something. Now, I'm a Scotch guy. What we're going to do is I wanted to... I wanted to fill the air with, I wanted everybody to have something that uh, they like too. So my brother I know likes a little bit of Irish, likes the more of the Irish blend. So we decided to start our first episode with Jameson, but not a special bottle of Jameson. They're, they're new cast mates. So uh, the cast mates, I think it's, it's because it's finished in a beer bottle. That's what's going to give it that extra little something. So we'll see what we like about it. We won't like spend the whole day uh, talking about what we think, but we'll have our first pour and uh, see what we like about it and then go into our first subject. So without further ado, I should probably get this, get the crack Let's go, bottle, man. right? Let's, Let's crack bottle. All right. So tell me about this. So, so this is, yeah. how many other brands are, are doing this up in like a, a uh, beer box, like a... I think, uh, I, I mean, I know I don't really know the answer to that. I'm spilling a little bit here. I think Jameson has several different uh, types. I, I think every... Uh, Manufacturer or distillery has their different drink of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I gave you a little bit more. I'll give you a little Always more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get a healthy. We're, we're going to be here for a minute. Like, like uh, there's, there's 30 minutes of this. And just, you just <laughs> right. want a little, little bit more. So this put a little, little bit boy. more in there. So, no, so they have a, they have a castmates. They have a, uh, I think they might have a black version of Jameson. Uh -huh. But the, this, yeah, it's, it's, it's usually just uh, their special. You know, version of I like it, man. So let's see. I like to originally, you know, taste my take my first drink, smell it, get a feel for what it what the natural flavors or natural smells yeah. are. Yeah. He knows this too. Yeah. Sip it, That's and then good, depending on your flavor, if, if it's a little too strong, then we can dial it back with a little water, uh -huh. like a drop or two. To, okay. That opens it up. That gives it a little more flavor. So, okay. without further ado, let's here you go, fellas. Thank you, brother. I appreciate let's try it. This. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Salute. Hello. Cheers. Cheers. You know, it's bad luck not to look each other directly. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it, you got it, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like that. Like or a bit mountain. Salud. Cheers to you guys. So off the top, what do you smell and then taste? That's much stronger than normal Jameson's. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting a really strong alcohol content. I mean, they're the typical notes that come from like a an Irish blend of whiskey or scotch that are kind of uh, earthy. Is alcohol content stronger on this one? What is that? Yeah. Is it like forty? Looks like we got yeah forty. Yeah. Okay. Oh, stout edition. Mm. That's what it is. That's what our strength is. That I don't really yeah. like stouts. Ah. It's probably the one beer I don't Stout drink. kind of has that kind of what, it's got coffee, coffee flavor. chocolate, yeah, flavor. Yeah, there's a little bit of that, like that kind of heaviness to it. And uh, yeah. even while it still has some of those uh, slight vanilla kind of kick, it's it's blendy. So it's not a, it, it it has some of the character. I think that that style gives it some of the character that I think I get from um, from Scotch, which you don't really get with whiskey. This, this doesn't beer. taste as much like an Irish whiskey. No. Yeah. It's not smooth. It's not as smooth as like the black label mm -hmm. Jameson. I love that one. Um, it's a little harsh. Mm. And, and, and you know what? Depending on the situation, that's great. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, 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 a lot of people make fun of me for drinking IPAs. They're like, oh, yeah, that's crappy beer. Sometimes it's true. But I like it because it's harsh and really strong. Like, yeah. I, it, it, it gives me a different buzz. And um, I think this is kind of like the. IPA version of Like it. the dirty version. The dirty version yeah. of Jameson, which is, hey. What do you think? I like it. I like it. I think uh, I, I taste that vanilla in there. Um, uh, I'm going to open mine up with a little drop or two. Yeah, open could you? Let me, let me see what happens. Let's see what happens. this one open too. Let's do that. Let us bless this. My <laughs> 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 oh, that's so inappropriate. Now, I'm curious to see how this. You know, taste after it like 
awesome. It will, it will definitely change the taste. And already, sometimes it's for better or for worse, depending on what smoother, you want. Smoother, immediately. Immediately smoother. See if you taste that. And it's literally just that drop of water. Just... That's actually pretty and tasty. And you it can did, get the it, flavors a little bit more. It did. So you got that like spicy hit at the end. Kept, that kind of like Can I say this up. really quickly? Um, I said, wow, that it, 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 it smoothed it out. It's, 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 it tastes like Jameson and it's, it, it's quite nice. And I said, it's pretty tasty. Yeah. And it reminded me that I had a conversation <laughs> with my friend Kirsten and he hates the word tasty. <laughs> he like hates it like I love that tasty word. beverage and, and, yeah, yeah. and I realized I use that I, and I don't like it really either because most people use the word tasty because they don't know how to describe they don't know, it's not a, it's not descriptive it's enough. not descriptive this is good well yeah. what, what do you like about so you're eating a piece of food that, how was the burger oh, I really it like tasty. it it's like like it's like just saying I really liked it they can't I talk really, about yeah. you know like That's the umami true. and the different flavors and okay. texture they can't talk about food and texture just, they're just tasty it's tasty yeah. And I realized I did it, and I was like, oh my gosh, I created a grave sin. So, <laughs> Kirsten, if you're watching this, I, I apologize. Yeah. What are you tasting in? I mean, any, any flavors that stand out to you? Um, I, I hate to say this, and I may get destroyed. Mm -hmm. By some of your elite Scotch drinkers, I don't really uh, drink yeah, Scotch I, a lot. I wouldn't call myself. A, I haven't. Uh, my palate. I, I admit that I, I have a good palate when it comes to food, and savory scotch, things. So, yeah. But when it comes to Scotch, my palate is just not there yet. Right. It's very. It's a very complex yeah. uh, alcohol and drink. Mm -hmm. And typically, Irish whiskeys don't have that complexity. This may sound crazy, but I would just want to see if somebody who does drink Scotch quite a bit, and including my brother, mm -hmm. that you know, you know get. The cast, it was the castmates. Castmates. Castmates, Jameson, pour a little bit of water in it, and you tell me if that tastes just like a little bit of scotch. It tastes, yes. Yeah. Like, this tastes more like earthy, mm -hmm. oaky. I would agree. Scotch. All of a sudden, it, and I, I don't know what the stout did to it. I get some of that earthiness. I get some of that uh, honey, slight honey. Good. I would honey. imagine this would go it's well funny with right honey. in the middle. I can um, like a, like a, like a, gin, like a, uh, Irish mule mm -hmm. with honey instead of uh, if you like that, yeah, yeah, like a little bit of honey. You know? mm -hmm. I think that would be really I can see good. that working. You know I mean, what I mean? The, the way they describe this on the bottle is rich coffee, smooth, seasoned oak barrels with a hint of hop stout and smooth coffee in barrels. And I think you get that, you get that in yeah. the finish. Mm -hmm. Like when you're done mm -hmm. swallowing, you get that coffee yeah. and you get the spice. And sometimes I don't taste this off of the first like couple of tastes. Like it, it, takes, a it, it takes a minute until like almost like, okay, mm -hmm. you're done. And then at the end of this conversation, we'll taste anything. Don't taste anything. This is it's great. Just, this is tasty. It doesn't be L-I-T lit. <laughs> <laughs> it's water at that point. It's water. Be like, I, like the, the, the 26 sip, be like, mm. I taste water. <laughs> that's H2O. That's that H2O. Taste, right there. H2O. Um, yeah. All right, so we'll get into our first discussion for the day. We'll keep enjoying the liquor, and hopefully that will fuel this uh, discussion. But in terms of being a geek and uh, talking about, I'm also a geek. I, I think you're a geek for cars. You're a geek for cars as well. We've yes, also sir. talked a lot about just import. You're, you're growing up in the love for the import scene. Me and my brother grew up in the same. Like I, I was a you know the guy who my first car was a 1981 Ford Escort. Uh, that I painted like metallic, metallic blue. blue and put a Honda Civic body kit on it. An evil Honda Civic body it was kit. Disgusting. With American racer rooms and drove that thing around the city like I was I was proud. But I looked up to the that twelve inch beat in the back and, and the thing topped out at like it said eighty on the dash, which that means it probably topped out at sixty. <laughs> 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 So you just rice. Uh, I was. Uh, it was rice before I knew. I, I didn't even know what rice was. But I got a rice ticket. I one will day. say this though. <laughs> the Trotters are like a very artistic yeah. family, and um, it was it was it was pretty ridiculous of a car, but it was immaculately done. Like it, the shape and the design of it may not have been like up to par of what we believe now I mean like completely not up to par I mean, right not up to par at all like you should show a picture you should just flash a picture of this car <laughs> um, <laughs> well, <a> fine one. <laughs> um, but it, you know my dad is a, a, our dad is a, a, a master craftsman and so he had mm -hmm. found this this is an Evo kit mm -hmm. you know kind of put and forced to be on a, an escort but it completely didn't look like it was forced it was immaculately done it, it was beautiful 
Pewdiepie's always come, but I think they arrest people will come evil. up. Yeah, yeah I an old school, like, an old school, evil. also evil. So, so here's something beautiful about design because I'm like, I'm really, and you can appreciate this as like the, the mind of an architect, right? Yeah. But like, I've been reading and researching about the the beauty that comes from bringing two complete, seemingly completely opposite things mm. and putting them into one, and that's sometimes that's how innovation happens, right? It's like putting two seemingly yeah. opposite or different things incongruent things together mm. i feel like that's maybe what you did right where yeah. it's like it's, it's or it's at least what i was trying to do right yeah and it's not as maybe that's as really uncomfortable as you think it might be maybe mm. right. maybe it just marries up a little yeah. bit uh, unexpectedly they so. got a lot of compliments on their car i mean mm-hmm. uh, you know but you of course as you grow you look back and you go what was i thinking right. you know but no it, it is interesting when you think about it from that perspective is that's nothing about us is I'm sure you're the same way is even being a ricer as you call it like I, was, I put my everything into it, being a ricer it was discipline it's I was like, like if, I'm, if I'm gonna be a ricer I'm gonna be the best ricer oh, right. I could possibly right. be yeah, like, right. I want a rice award if I'm gonna do it you right. know but uh so yeah that's pretty I mean true. I love that you said I mean that kind of gave me chills when you you know you know us. <laughs> I'm listening to what you're saying. You're saying take these two opposite things and put them again. That's what innovation is. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just a genius statement. I just yeah. wanted to point that and out. That, that, that was really true. beautiful because it immediately made me start thinking of architecture. I'm like, oh man, how many times there's an innovative moment in architecture when there's like these two seemingly opposites that are together? And I mean, when you mm-hmm. look at interior and exterior and we're all I mean everybody my house I want it to be inside outside I want it to blend I wanted them to come together yeah. that's always a, a a conversation in architecture and how to how to maybe blend that 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 barrier between um the household or the shelter and the exterior and the landscape and the outside and really merging those two creates a very pleasurable human experience yeah it's a moment where people like when two opposites come together. I think that's yeah. really, really. I agree. I, agree. I, I I'm gonna walk away from this, and I'm gonna start like thinking about that. It's gonna be a new thing for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That actually that actually brings us to the subject that we we're gonna talk discuss today, which is um, something that's kind of like dear to my heart, which is these two opposites come together. Which I am a big geek for film. Um, I'm also a big geek for cars, mm-hmm. and so with that, and, and music, and, and film, and that's something that, I have an event company that puts together an event called the Run Rally, and in the Run Rally, uh, drivers are paid to be a part of this two-day adventure, um, and a lot of, this is nothing new, rallies happen all over the world where there are, you know, rallies, destination rallies, we're going to drive to here, and it's a lot of camaraderie between the drivers, but what makes us different is, we put on a production because I love film so much. I wanted to I wanted to say, hey, how can I pluck something from every car film I've ever watched? Because I always mm-hmm. saw a disconnect. Like I wanted to be Steve McQueen driving that 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 old school Mustang and bullet down the streets of San Francisco. And I wanted to like feel that on the streets. And I you can try to feel it, but I was like, how can I get a group of people to feel it? So we put on these events and they're all themed after theatrical film. And lately there's been a movie that's come out that's made me think a lot about my event and how to push things further, and that was Baby Driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's something that ties film with music. It's, 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 a, it's a different take on the action film draw, genre in that it's pushing this whole idea, can music drive a movie? Um, so I was thinking maybe we could talk about can that. Can music drive a movie? I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm like, oh my God, you know, man, that's um, great. Did so, you plan that? I did not. I think that... I'm gonna, right I'm gonna give a, I'm gonna give a point, yeah, yeah. point to point to uh, castmates for for helping me for that helping him that you know get that. Actually, I have to say this is delicious. Yeah, uh, the the water I mean, uh, it's perfect. As our viewers grow, this is episode one, so I'm just I'm just thinking grandeur. But hopefully, yeah. Yeah, at some point, people can start tell you know sending us a little bit of yeah. that pocket change, and we can put your bill, we can put your bottle right here on this table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. You okay, you okay. <laughs> but right now it's James. Right now it's, it's gonna be James. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, I mean, like, we've all seen the movie, and it, like, I, like I said, the reason it also makes me think about this is because this movie made me think about, like, that same, those moments of having that escort in my childhood and growing up, uh, a lot of that was about, like, trying to capture that feeling that I saw when I, when I, when I for my first viewing of Fast and the Furious. Um, I don't know, what did you guys think about it, and what does it kind of mean to you from that level, from that level of being an enthusiast? Let, uh, Jack take this first. Yeah, so, um... I mean, I always like to go into movies, and you know this, I've seen movies with you. I like to go in 
actually not knowing anything about the film. I don't, I usually don't watch previews if I mm -hmm. can help it, but I like to go in with like a clean slate. Right. I like to go in unexpectedly, um, without opinion, mm -hmm. without backstory. Um, so going into Baby Driver, I didn't know really anything about the storyline. Right. So just, I just went in cold. Um, and just right off the top, I think it just like sitting in the theater and, and just taking in all the senses I had known going in, okay, I'd heard that, okay, it was a, a, a little bit of a different take and there was something a little bit special about this film um, that maybe wasn't um, capitalized on in other driving films right. um, to this degree. And it was a little bit more of an artistic take on uh, a, dr a car movie, mm -hmm. right? Um, and having said that, that opening scene where it just cuts to him in the driver's seat <laughs> and that music coming through, um, it took me by surprise because, I, again, I went in not knowing what where this would take me. Right. And um, as soon as he kicks it into gear and he starts, like, getting that car, <laughs> like, whipping that Subi out of there, Yeah. that's when it got me. Like, at first I was like, okay, this is very, this is a slow start. This is... Um, not necessarily in a bad way, but I, okay. I, I wasn't certain where it was going after mm -hmm. that. And um, again, because I didn't know his role in the film at mm -hmm. all. Um, and so I'm curious to know what, if you know you have any additional yeah. backstory that I didn't have going into it, how you felt. But for me, um, not knowing anything about it, I think it was a pleasant surprise. And at that moment, that was just like me... Um, at the top of the hill, just falling all the way down, and the the, the entire way down was just like a, just a, a pure pleasure ride. Yeah. You know, it was just like um, it was almost like a, like, like symphonic, you know, mm. where like the music really was attuned to the storyline and mm -hmm. just carried me through. There was never a moment where I fell out of it. Yeah. Um, and so it took me a minute, but once I got caught, man, I was just yeah, stuck for the rest of the movie. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Matt? Um, <clears throat> I went completely cold. Um, I knew it was a driver movie. The trailer looked amazing. Mm -hmm. it, the color looked good. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I just kind of looking at the trailer just a visual mm -hmm. uh, presentation. Like, okay, sure. this looks good. I've got to go see that. And then my brother, once my brother co-signs a movie, everybody, once <laughs> Malcolm co-signs a movie, you have to go see it. And, um, uh, it, you just have to go see it. So I'm like really excited, um, <clears throat> uh, to go see it. And, and I, I get in the movie theater, I start watching it. And I mean, just off the back, I'm already hyped. Like mm -hmm. the music comes in. Um, I noticed that it's already kind of getting on beat. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I, I've dabbled in music, uh, myself. And so, um, I would have to say, me and Malcolm and I talked about this, like, the, tr the, the, the tracks weren't, like, these amazing tracks, like, from, like, Guardian of the Galaxy, but that. they were just, they still were good because of how they were moving the film forward, how yeah. they were, Execution. how they were used, it was almost like they could have used any music, they could have right. used, and I've never seen that before, I've never seen, like, I didn't necessarily like all those songs. Right. We have a certain type of music that we Yeah, like. I want to hear epic it's stuff. it's not epic enough. Yeah, I, I, I like call it epic music. Epic yeah. hip-hop, epic rock, epic, you know, mm -hmm. anything. Anything can be epic. Uh, yeah, epic country music. But I, I won't even say that there was like, you know, even 50%, it was probably not 50% of those songs I would ever even really listen to. Right. And that says a lot about the directing and yeah. how... Yep. They chose to move the the movie or, or drive the movie through the music. Everything was on beat, and I got excited. And then when I saw him actually drive the car, oh. it was like, it was a breath of fresh air. Because as a lover of cars, all of us, I think, we can probably agree, it's like, finally. We're middle Fast and Furious finally. 9, right. and we're just tired. Oh my of gosh, just, yeah. finally, finally, right. somebody's not, you know... Breaking concrete with their legs. <laughs> right. uh, you know, someone's actually driving a car the way you, the street for street. someone, can drive that Subaru. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things as like, eh, that's the movie portion. But I have seen yeah. real rally car drivers 
drive backwards in a Subaru. Rooms, I've yeah. seen them drift backwards in the Su Subaru. I've seen them do the WRX in the snow and yeah. on the toge. And that car can do four wheel drive drifts can do things that don't make sense. Yeah, they just don't. They blow your mind. And so, like Malcolm was saying, the footwork now, and everything was really good. Like you oh, can see him short, driving the car. Oh, he was heel towing and heel towing and pulling like, the e brake. What is going and, on? They're yeah. showing that in the movie. I thought it was just brake and you hit the gas and you power slide. Through. Shift to ten. Yeah, yeah you shift right. to thirty. Now we're shitting on Fast and Furious, but I love Fast and Furious. Oh, oh, oh it, we grew up on we grew it. Up it's on amazing. It. But but it's a completely different franchise now. Yes. I'll still be there for 10 and 15 and when they go to space and when they fight Transformers. And right. <laughs> I'll still be there, yeah. but, you know, it's a different movie. But, uh, that, 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 but I just want to pick up on something that you said earlier. It's like, why can't I have it on? Right. And it makes no sense to me, even to this day, why I can't have, um, with all the technology we have, I can't have a video game that provides me customization of my cars, <laughs> a real life driving experience, and also arcade mode to drive my friends around the city when I don't want to go at, to the track. Right. You know, in all of these games like Forza, Gran Turismo, they all have these little niches and it's really great, but there's there's no Ryu, there's no somebody who can kind of do it all. Right. Not at the highest level, right? Like right. Saget, this is really <laughs> so nerdy. Really like deep. I hope you guys really, really understand. What I'm saying. So okay. Saget has long reach. Uh -huh. He's pretty powerful, but he's kind of slow, yeah. right? Uh, you know, uh, 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 Ken does a lot of kick moves. Why you can shoot the fireball? He can do the aerial attack, okay. and he can spin across. He's kind of well-rounded. He's not a ten in any area, uh -huh. all areas. He's an eight in all areas. Right. And you this was one of the game. first times where I saw. You know, eight in the music department, right? Eight in visuals, yeah. and eight in the actual driving of a car, and eight in the different types of cars that were used, and eight in action. Like it was, it just hit, yeah, qu quite a few of categories, yeah. And I'm like, hey, none of these are like necessarily tens, but it hitting all these eights makes it a right. ten. Well, something that I think we disagreed originally when we first saw it. Now that I've seen it three oh, times. Randy. It's not this, well, you're ending a little bit, but like I do think that it does hit on all those ones. But you had a good point of saying that it kind of did lose some of the momentum in the middle. Yeah. And it does. It, Probably about 70, But I think it's when you revisit it. Because I think when you first see it, that height carries you through. Yeah. Uh, upon watching the middle does get there. There's some. If I had to nitpick. Right. But it, is it a solid? It's a solid eight. You know, nine because oh, first off, it's also a director trying something that just hasn't been done in that way. No one's done. It's a new story. Yeah. Um, to to some, right. did, yeah, were you gonna say something? I was just gonna say yeah, to the the point that, that Matt made. Yeah, like original story. Kudos to that. Right? Yeah. Because Praise it's God. not a re recycled <laughs> idea necessarily, which is what caught me off guard. Mm. I was like, oh, this is something new that I haven't seen before. <laughs> and so I would. That's why I stuck around for the, for yeah. the entire ride because I was like, I want to see what happens next. Yeah. I don't even know where they're going with this. <laughs> and so that's what I enjoyed about it. Yeah. Personally. Did you ever have a moment, because you had a different kind of different experience, you're kind of like wondering about the movie. Uh, me and Malcolm, I think we kind of walked in like, this is going to be good, right? And you're kind of confused, and then you're like, wow, this is really great, and then it carried through, you through the, the movie. So when it's slingshot, mm -hmm. you got kind of slingshot moving forward, What happened? how did you feel when it got to a little, it got a lot it got theatrical. It got very, very theatrical, like almost like a wild, a wild play, a wild right, play yeah. that just things were almost dream logic. Like, how did you show up here? And you know, a, I think that's kind of, but yeah, that's yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I, that's I, kind of the point. I'm not criticizing. Really. I'm just saying, like, no, how, yeah, this is something that actually happened in the film. We're not letting anything out. We're just saying it gets really wild right. into how things. And if we want to talk about things, let's it. just say spoiler alert. And okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. if you haven't seen it by now, what are you doing? last what heist, you, but... basically last heist portion uh -huh. on, how did you feel? You know, I mean, I think that given that every single detail of this film was um, set up in a way that would contribute to the storyline, mm -hmm. like I felt like because it was down to, the, if you... That's it's true. one of those films that you need to rewatch over that. and over you again. You'll find something different, right? Yeah. And I've only seen it once, and I need to see it a second time. I, I, I'm 
itching for that. And, and not to cut you off, are you just, are you referring to Kevin Spacey's complete switch? Is are we going to be honest here? I, I, talking I, I'm talking a little bit about that. And him. Malcolm actually said that you know Matthew, if you really look at it this way, that makes total sense. And you are right. When I look back on it, when I was in the movie theater. I was like, oh, okay. Like, I love this film. Okay, this is getting a little crazy. But when I talked to you about it, it was like, well, he always kind of saw him like a... He wasn't ever going to do anything to him. Yeah, almost like a father figure. Yeah. Almost like a father figure. So, I mean, I'm sorry. You continue. So, I, I yeah. wanted to see if I was clear on where he was coming from. I, th- I, I think they thought that out because it's, you know, such a detailed movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, clearly. Of course, yeah. But... But there are some films like that get haphazardly, you know. Because is that conveyed to the audience is the argument? Because I see on his first view, you think everything through as the writer right. and the director. But did every audience see? I think a lot of people were kind of caught off guard by some of the ending and the way the characters just started to do certain things that seemed a little out of character. Like Kevin Spacey decided he decides to save him. Yeah. Uh, John like, Hamm has been cool this blood at this whole life, movie. Like, of course his girl goes down, but now he's just like driven and he's dry. Yeah, I mean, it, it some people could imagine that the ending is just kind of very like, it's okay, like a time to time to like, attack like, this yeah. song, time to finish right. this up. What do we yeah, do? Yeah, we're gonna you know? wrap this up. You know. Um, and it never keep it, it keeps non wrapping up. Right. It just keeps going on. I think that that was my only fault to the, the mm-hmm. film is that I'll ding it like a point five or a point seven five. It's like a 9.25 for me, which is extremely high. <laughs> but I'm going to ding it because there was moments where I was like, I am satisfied. Wrap this up. Wrap this up, B. With Dave Chappelle. You <laughs> right, know, uh, you right, right, right. right. Yeah. You're gonna buy, wrap, wrap it, it up. up. Class. Wrap, wrap it up, it up. Right. Um, Man, I feel like that shit up, B. I, I know. I, I bring up that joke on a regular basis and at people work, and people don't, don't get about. it. And when I do it, I feel so... I, I'm so dated. I feel dinosaurish. I go wrap it up, B. And people and like, 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 you mean like that wrap it up box? And you have to be like, you've seen Dave Chappelle, Dave right? Dave Chappelle, right? Wrap, wrap, they, they wrap people have all up. seen Dave Chappelle, but they don't live. Some people haven't watched all the episodes. Some people are too young. They watch so like, like a couple of clips, like, oh yeah, Dave Chappelle show. And then they'll kind of get us, and I'm like, yeah, wrap it up. Right, I, right, right, right. No, I don't no, know what you're talking about. Like, what the fuck? I'm old. But, no, but, okay, let's also get to what I really, in terms of talking about this movie, we could we can go back and forth about how well it's executed, right? But I would say, I walked away from this film. With like, it gave me goosebumps and it made me think about why I love film. And some of the things I've been wanting to see in film for a long time. I saw this movie like the musical for guys. Like, you know, like the date movie for guys. Whereas, you know, date movies, a musical, and Ryan Gosling is singing and dancing and he's twirling the girl. But this time I got to see him twirl the Subi. Mm. And, and I got to see oh, I like that. where is I like that. The, <laughs> the music choices were the song. And the dance was the action, ding, 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 and ding, they ding, still ding, had ding, love. Ding. Yeah. <laughs> whenever Thank somebody you, comes, when, when it does a good, a good, we're gonna shout out the plug. So right, like yeah, that's what a little I felt bit more. about this. Good job, and good job. To take it even a step further, like seeing that on screen in the way when I'm coming up with ideas good for job. the run rally, yeah, or when I'm coming up with ideas for things, a lot of times I'm listening to music, and I'm seeing th- I'm seeing action in my head on beat. And to see a movie where like guns were on beat, like I listen to a song sometimes. And I think oh, the I always wonder how people listen to music. Like I always wondered if you're listening to a cool rock track that you love that we both like. Are you seeing anything in your head? Or are you just listening to the music? Is it just giving you a body high? Somebody like me, I'm like seeing visuals, and the visuals are taking me places. And a lot of times I'm connected to the visuals that I've created for a song. And every time I listen to it, I'm either seeing that same visual or I'm creating a new visual. Mm-hmm. And so this movie was kind of the embodiment of that and the way my head thinks. So it gave me kind of like these like, oh my God, this isn't something new. Um, even with that, like, just that, like me and him used to drive. We used to go out late at night and just be those geeks that would get in your, mm-hmm. your like, little cars and used listen to. to music still do. Used yeah, a lot of times music is, is heavily mm-hmm. ingrained in the way I like plan drives or a canyon road. Some guys like my buddies, like Ozzy just loves to listen to the sound of the car. If it's my car, I've been used to that sound, so I want to hear music to get me into this driving mentality. And I think this movie did a, did a really great job of that, of making me uh, making people kind of get a glimpse into why how a driver's mind might might work and how music can get you such into the groove of driving. Mm-hmm. So, well, like music is music. Something personally for me is something that actually helps me perform my best. Mm-hmm. Um, there are things I do while I'm driving. If I have the right song on, I just feel um, <clears throat> compelled to like to um, be my best, and it actually um, it actually does allow me or um, 
don't even know what the word I'm trying to look for, but it, it allows me to actually a- a- exceed my limit mm. from what I thought, like, and I have a couple little little tracks, little secret tracks uh, where I live. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I have a little couple of secret tracks where I live, and, you know, maybe on a late night, I may just roll into, you know, and when I say a secret track, it's, it, I tell Malcolm, it's basically any stretch of road that is very quiet, mm-hmm. very open, very kind of backwoods, no one's going to be around, and it's, it, it comprises of either two turns or more. That's it. That's all it is. Just get in the car, take the corner the correct way, be safe, and then I'm done. I go, oh, I took that pretty quickly. That was good. You know? And it's not about like speeding or like uh, breaking the law. It's just about like how can I go through this corner the best way possible? I mean, utilizing my tires completely. Am I feeling that my back is coming out a little bit? How can I correct that? And there are nights where I just am listening to the music and I'm able to do it mm. the mm-hmm. best I've ever. I, I don't think I could reimagine it or recreate it. It's just I was able to do it then. And um, music also helps me make mistakes because I get mm, so ingrained. So I get so caught up in the music. Mm-hmm. I take a corner too hard. I that's overshoot interesting. something. For me, when um, I have no music, yeah. that's when, when I'm oh, over... So, oh. so we're different. Yeah, I'm, I'm overly stimulated by the music. I'm over... I overthink my normal... My brain runs sporadically every day. It's, it's always firing different things. So when I'm driving, I'm, I've noticed when I have people in the car and I'm like, hey, look at this, and I'm focusing on what I'm doing, um, I overthink it. I may scrub the tire on the curb. I may, you know, kind of get over at the wrong time when, it, when the music is on. I don't even think about it. No one else matters. It's just like the car, I get the car. Like wherever the car is at, I know exactly where it is. It makes total sense because I'm not thinking anymore. It's just a feel. Yeah. Sounds like you live your life a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Those ten seconds to nothing else. <laughs> oh my god! Right. But I feel that. I totally do feel yeah. that. Yeah. Now, okay, that's interesting because I- I've seen a lot of like memes and stuff too, where it's like you need to look for someone's address and so you turn the music down. Do you ever do that though? Like I've done. I've oh, found because you can't focus. Because you can't it. focus. Yeah. Yeah, that's you, only me. And so, so I, 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 I feel like that's me too. Okay. But 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 I feel like when. But when you're like on a like open road, your open road. Open road. That's for me. Canyon road. I don't know. Do you do that the same thing? Do you still turn the music down? I think I need a little bit of both. Yeah. I think I need, I need like a like a little bit of the um, the actual road feel. Mm. You know, I like I I want to feel. Um, and hear every little piece of that asphalt like coming off my tire. Mm. And then also, I want to hear the music to like complement that. I feel like if I drown it out, then um, I do get car- I get I think I get so carried away in the music mm. that I lose the details and um, I agree with this. And, and mm, I agree the with actual that. you know precision. That's, that's why necessary. I say I make mistakes at that point. So, for mm-hmm. example, a rally of two rallies ago. I was an Aston Martin, mm-hmm. and I'm driving the Vantage and on a Canyon Road, uh, and I'm really into the track. I'm really feeling it, and I overshoot a hairpin. I feel it, and the car is about <laughs> to skip, and it's almost going to spin. And I'm trying to overcorrect, and I, you know, I remember it fishtailed a little bit, and I say, you know what? I'm just going to try to. I'm just going to plan it. I'm just going to give it, try to correct and give it gas, and I correct to give it gas. And of course, I, f- I always feel like, I, I don't know if it's my driving ability, I like to always say the car had my back. I feel like these mm. these cars are so good at, like, that did that the GTR, GTR caught it. I was like, that, that, I they say Jesus take right the wheel, now. I said, GTR took the wheel. Right. <laughs> no, that was like, no, Jesus always takes the wheel. That Aston no. Martin did not have your back. No, it didn't. You no. actually yeah. did the right thing. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the Aston Martin that you were driving was a, two, was a 2000. It was a 2000. It was a 2000. That Aston Martin did not have your back. Yeah, yeah. You, did you have VC, VCT off? Uh, I probably didn't. You probably I'm didn't. Right. And I'm, I, I, I did it. I did it. I'm pretty sure it was helpful, but uh, once the Aston Martin's that ass got loose, right. I'm pretty sure. The only thing you can do is to counter steer and, and gas and it. And gas it and hope it kept. Mm-hmm. But those tires caught. I mean, yeah, Good of job. course, they, as they should. But, hey, right here. But, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> so, right here. Right here. Right here. I guess I agree with you. It's like when I'm, when I'm feeling the road and I'm, 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 I turn the music down a little bit, I, that's where I can really focus. I think I drive my best that way. But I think I have my most fun. 
I, I have fun when I'm listening to music. Mm. That's when the suddenly the experience goes beyond trying to. I think that's the I think that's the issue kind of in the car community. It's like mm. with car enthusiasts, it's like you can have arguments with people about like what's the best line to take. And I luckily, first of all, I'm not trying to be a race car driver. If I do that, I'll go to the track. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to enjoy. Right. I sh actually, you shouldn't be trying to be a race no. car driver on the street. You should just you be should, having a good driving a, experience. Exactly. Right. And so my experience is connected to that music. Police officers, we are not encouraging <laughs> speed racing or racing any kind of way. Absolutely. We actually, drivers really don't really believe in that. No. None of that. And, what are you listening to right I now? I say trotters a lot because when I talk to other people, right. I always say trotters and I speak of my family right. because it's just like a, it's like it, a it's last like, name that people remember. Mm -hmm. But let me say the trotters and Garcias, we don't believe in that. <laughs> now, I know most cars don't have CD players or tape decks anymore. I'm being, I'm just dating myself. But what do you listen to? What's on the, what's on the track list in the car? What's in the CD um, player these days when you, when you're going for a drive? I think it ebbs and flows. Like, like, what would you put on to drive and think? So it, it depends on where I'm at in life, where I'm actually mm -hmm. driving. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, the vibe in LA, when I'm driving in LA, I have a different track playing than when I'm driving in like, I don't know, like Northern California or like San Diego. Right. You know, if, I, if I'm okay. in the city and I'm weaving through buildings and I'm like, the scenery is very different for me, um, that d determines like the type of music. So in LA, it's gonna be maybe a little bit more like electronic, mm -hmm. um, a little yeah. bit more synthy. Mm -hmm. um, there you go. And so, um, for me, it's got that digital feel. Right. Um, or it could even be like uh, I'm just rolling through with like Jay, like on on, yeah. on mm -hmm. you know on the track, and feel like I'm like just cruising real slow to like rap music. Yeah. It's one or the other. I mean, it mm -hmm. depends on the day to be honest. But like, I feel like for late night drives though, um, the time of day and like yeah. where I'm at. Um, it's usually like more of like an electronic feel. So no mariachi music. No mariachi. <laughs> hey man. When, look, let me clarify Boy. though. When I'm, when I'm, <laughs> When so, I, like, that, like when I'm in like the the, the I'm normal, sorry we we're exploiting our resident Mexican. When I when I'm in that 805, okay, and I'm in like in like Oxnard, like deep. That's the only way I can fit in. No, I, Otherwise, that that electronic music that doesn't fly with. Hey, the whole you know you guys got me that one day. You guys are listening to the rock. We I went on a drive with these. We yeah. were on a concert to rock a rock group that I listen to. I, but even though I can say I can't forget remember the name right now, that's probably Castmates. Right. But I get in the car with two buddies from work, and Zach's driving. Right. And the minute we start driving, they turn on Kendrick. So I'm like, Woo. yeah. I get one of these. I get right, to right. they turn on Humble. That's when Humble first. Humble. Drove. Yeah. So then everybody starts laughing. And I feel like mm, the only black guy in the car, and I started, my world starts shrinking. Why are they laughing? <laughs> right? Why are they laughing? Why are they, why are they, they laughing? So then they go, okay, well, we thought, we said, when Malcolm gets in the car, we should probably change up, give him something he so, wants to listen to. So, no one, I'm a person that probably, I probably listen to rap 20% of the time. So, and they go, they go, let's put on Humble for Malcolm. So that's me getting you back for that. Right? <laughs> so let me give you some backstory on <laughs> this, though, because you didn't see the other side of it. Okay, okay. So we were going to see uh, Bring Which Me was the, great, though. It was, it was Bring Me the Horizon. Yes. And um, help me out here. Who, who's the other? Um, uh, Under Oath, right? Under Oath. And yeah. so, um, so I did have a playlist <laughs> set like on a CD because yeah. I'm I like, thought he was gonna say I had a playlist set for just you know black just people. Just for black people. Just when they for get Malcolm in my car. Right. So just for Malcolm. He's like pull it out, get the CD right. in. And, yeah. uh, just in case. Here it comes, guys. Let's get it. Right. And so, so I had like Under Oath. And like being bring me the horizon like mashed in on yeah. like one CD and I was like okay that's for the drive there yeah but then you know I I do like rap you know mm -hmm. I love it and so I was like okay like I need uh I like some hype songs like some songs that'll just get us like kind of like turned up yeah. right and get us ready to party because that's what we're there to do and so I made like a, a playlist that was like <laughs> We Them Boys right and that was the name I wrote it I wrote it, I wrote it on the CDs. I like it. And, so this, keep going. This is immaculate. This and is so, good. so my thought process there was like, okay, I'll play this at some point along the the ride when maybe we've ridden the uh, the uh, like the 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 rock right. like genre a little too hard. Like maybe we want to get some rap going, right? And then when that's I that's what I came up, for the rock genre. But when I pulled up, I was like, all right, you know what? This would be funny. I'm gonna put this on. It was just great. For, they got me. It I was, was like, so I'm gonna put this on just for Malcolm. Because they like, elicited a response. I immediately was like, Ooh. 
I disclaimed it. I was like, look, Malcolm's gonna get in here, he's gonna be hyped. This is the way we're gonna do it. And we did, and that's what we did. We put we put it on and, and I was post like, this episode, you're gonna get like tweeted by like Black Lives Matter, you're like, how could you let Garcia then I like, even say his first name, how could you let Garcia talk to you like that? Right, yeah, dude, no I can't like, imagine a bucket of chicken, he just started eating it. He was like, Man guys, I haven't eaten all day. <laughs> Wasn't even like that. No, no, no. Also, no, no. We no, know it's not like that. And right. I and, and here's the thing. I I was in San. I, I, I have three points actually because you guys. Yeah, we're, you got some good stuff going, but um, I'm gonna say a couple of things. I'm gonna swing it back around to yeah. uh, the theatrics in and com combine that with the driving experience. Is one. I was in San Francisco and I got picked up um, in an Uber by uh, this Asian guy and he had a really deep voice. He sounded like a black dude. And the way his vernacular, everything just sounded like I was talking to one of my friends from Inglewood or something right. like that. And um, he immediately started playing like rap music. And it was stuff I liked. I don't play. I am a very honest person. I will call you out on, like, on the spot. Yeah. So I said, hey man, um, you know, why'd you put this on? And he said, um... This is the most honest thing I've ever heard anybody say. He said, well, I looked at your, your picture. I tend to look at the pictures of people I pick up. And I mm -hmm. play the music I think they want. Wow. And he, and he said, to tell you the truth, I usually am spot on. So don't you, do you not like the music? Damn, he threw it back at you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, like, he's like, do you not like that chicken? It was like, <laughs> no, no, it? it was like the no, moment I know. with Dave Chappelle when he goes, it was the most racist thing ever happened, you know. He's the the, the yeah. waiter goes. I know what you want. You want the chicken. And he said, "How do you how did you know I want the chicken?" He said, well, "Everybody could see that, like you know, kind of a mile away." Right. And Dave Chappelle was like, "And I was so upset <laughs> because I did want the chicken." So I did want the chicken. And you know what? Yeah. I told him. I said, "You know, look, I do like I, I do like the music that you're playing, but I actually like a wide variety of yeah. music. And in a way, you kind of you know you looked at me, said I'm black, and you know you kind of put it on and." And you 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 were actually right, but the only reason I'm not upset at you or not kind of I don't have an issue with this is not only not coming you're not coming at me like negatively or extremely defensively. Um, he's he's just being himself. Right. He's he's being honest. I love when people are honest about yeah. their views. Okay. If they mm -hmm. if you support Trump, I don't support Trump. But I want if you can have a conversation with me and tell me why you support Trump, but not come at me aggressively. Right. I won't come at you aggressively. I'm gonna hear you out, and I'm gonna tell you my side. And he basically was telling me where he grew up, and he actually grew up with a bunch of black people, which yeah. made perfect sense. And right. he said, "Look, this is what I normally listen to all the time." And he was like, "All of my black friends listen to rap music." Right. And he's like, "I just, I made a guess." Yeah. And he, and he was like, and near the end of the time, he's like, "I apologize if that offended you." And I said, "You know, at first I was slightly offended, but like." It's really neat, neither here nor there because you got it right. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, but I say yeah. that because it's it's it, it's it was just connected. No, it's good. It's actually yeah. No, yeah. So, I mean, so was, was that Uber? Uber? That was an Uber. It was actually, a good, it was he drove it drove well. It was actually a really great conversation because it was this conversation speaking to someone who I felt was from the culture but wasn't from my culture, but was a part of the hip hop culture. But it wasn't yeah. black. But I was kind of because <laughs> because if, if it were Lyft, what would you have tipped? Would you have tipped them any less or more? Would have? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, definitely by the end of that ride, because of our conversation that mm -hmm. we had, and I got to understand where he was coming from. If he was just this um, uh, uh, person who had no idea, right, mm -hmm. about the hip hop community or um, the black community, or never grew up with us as like growing up right he had insight into that he'll mm. never be black but he had insight into absolutely. it absolutely and so because of that it's not that I, I didn't have to give him a pass he you know someone who doesn't have that insight and they're just doing a you know blanket stereotype then i'd have some some conversation well, he, you with also him. have to realize somebody like that is also not blanket stereotype he's not blanket stereotype he, he has a just because someone is not we always talk about giving people pass and mm -hmm. I, I agree with right. you but i also think that that gets thrown around a lot where some people have a a rightful i, I would call a rightful place in the culture if you're someone that consumes the culture so for example like, and doesn't I consume not, it like a culture i am not white and i consume i've always consumed rock the rock 
And um, am I a culture vulture because I consume rock? Well, rock was also kind of cool. Well, yeah, rock comes from both a black yeah audience, mm -hmm. and so we, we can break that down. We can break down yeah. the type of rock. That yes, I the type of rock that you can consume mostly been cultivated is mostly white mo yes, that is it true. is metal. It, it is it, yes. smashing pumpkins. Yes. Good, it's very good, good clarification. Very it's not blues. It's not. Yeah. it's not that sound. It's like an offshoot sound, like you know that I have like really been like I I I connect with this. You know, I always like to think if to me the soul like. I don't want this to sound wrong, but like, you know, people typically call like soul music. It's like more of a black mm -hmm. sound, black yes, music. Of course. But I've always thought that was a strange term. I, mm -hmm. I understand why it was coined that way, because it is soulful. You feel, you hear the soul in it. Mm -hmm. But in a way, all music has to come from the soul. Mm -hmm. Right? That is true, but I think when they're talking about soul, that's so, actually to very me, the funny guitar because speaks to my soul. Yeah, that's when true. A, yeah, yeah. All music, really, if it speaks to you, is soul music. But but I get the like I said, it's a classification. You talk about so, soul food. You know, I, yeah, I, I mean, there's no, soul Korean. I'm not arguing yeah, that. there's all types of soul food. You know, it's just home food. It's food that makes you. Uh, we call that comfort food. Yeah. Okay. It's like it's like you feel it. Right. You feel it. It's uh, it's it's raw and it's not in its it's not in its um. It's most meticulous it's form. It's not measured. It's, it's like a little it's bit not, of Yes, it that, isn't right? measured. It so I think we got this conversation, but we never answered yeah. what's in your player when right now, like when you drive yeah. to drive. <laughs> Sorry, no, 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 he did. He did. What did he say? He said. Uh, he said it, it. It depends. He talked about he the genres that are that are in his in his in his his player. So what do you listen? To? So what I listen to can can span from silhouette can't. Uh, Con from Kanaboon, which is a Japanese band that uh, no, no, no. created a I don't even took the world by storm off of the uh, Naruto opening 16 oh, from Naruto Shippuden. Oh, uh, uh, why I know this because I'm a nerd and a geek. Right, that's not. Uh, I like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I play. All but the I think time. I've been. I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> I think it's like, when Matthew plays the real, he puts the song. I listen song to. I listen to. Listen to I listen to Jay when I'm rolling downtown. If you got a moonroof in your car or your 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 top you drops. Talk about that for a second. Uh, you know, I've got you know, I've got dots and two AZX, and I've got a BMW 328i. And my old school dots in twenty uh, two eighty ZX eighty two. You know, it's got the it's got the hard tops that come off. And rolling through this through downtown, and you just look up. Late at night, almost like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., you come out of the bar and you just roll, just roll, creep through L.A. It is amazing listening to like maybe some smooth like J or listening to, um, I, you know, a, a, some OVO sounds like, you know, um, yeah. um, just like some real chill, cool, like there's chill epic music as well. And so, you know, you're, or Radiohead, I'll be listening to Radiohead just looking at the buildings kind of move by. It looks like a music video. And then on my way home out of the city, I will play, you know, maybe some electronic music, maybe some Daft Punk or something that's like, um, something from like Tron. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's just it's the lights flying. Yeah. And when I speak on that, it kind of comes back to, you know, your kind of situation that, you know, this idea that you came up with, with the Run Rally, um, yeah, um, some of the viewers may know this, some of the viewers may not. You know, Mal put on um, a run rally that was based off of Mad Max, Mad Road. Mm -hmm. I, after the rally, there was a rally that I did the Mad Road and I didn't have a CD player. And it was before we mm -hmm. had like figured out to put in, you know, use MP3s and things like that. Mm -hmm. Or you know Bluetooth devices yeah. and things like that. So we didn't have this digital copy. Years. We had a CD copy. So I drove down there, Camaro SS, 420 horses. Amazing time just listening to the car and the the, the engine. And Malcolm, uh, all of his run rounds come with a CD, and it's a play. It's a theatrical play, along with selected music to play in between scenes while you're driving. And you hit checkpoints and see more plays. You can speak on that, but I won't go oh, into yeah. the, 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 the plays or theatrics. Let's just talk about the music in the CD. The Mad World CD, I encourage anyone to, like, if, if you just ask my album before, he wants to give me for like 99 cents. I don't know how okay. much it would cost. But uh, I listened to the Mad World CD af after I the rally. I think it might be my favorite one. After the rally. And... I was driving and listening to the, the, the whole way through, 
and I broke down in tears. Like mm. I was crying at the end. It's this it's this moment where they're they're seizing the truck that has all of the goods that you've been trying to race for. You've yeah. been you've been driving all day to Vegas trying to get the clues. It's like a murder mystery on wheels. Mm. And you're trying to get the clues to like, you know, have your team win and, and to protect the 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 cargo and the and the good guys and help the the main guy in the story succeed in, in overthrowing the bad guy. And there's this ending where it's this climax where it is playing the the song from uh, Mad Max Fury Mad, Road. Mad Max Fury Road. And who who is that? Is it? It's uh, Hans Zimmer and it's amazing. I'm sorry, I can't think of. Yeah, uh, it's the, the, they, they XL, XL, yeah. XL, 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 Junkie, Beat Junkie XL, Junkie XL. They put together Hans Zimmer, and Brothers in Arms, Fantastic. Brothers in Arms. Look it up on YouTube. Listen to the song. So it's that, but it's with the sounds of the cars actually hitting each other and colliding. And I was driving this, my. You're, that down, was you're the going day. down this middle of Mojave Desert Road, yeah. and you're listening to that. Yeah. So that yeah. was the day I was. I, that was one of the days I was driving my car, at a, just in in perfection. I had a couple of cars come up to me. There was a, you know, a Mustang. I was in my BMW, and I, I felt like I was just destroying cats. I should not right. be able to destroy. Right. It was always in the turns, and I was. Which killed. I don't advocate being out there destroying people. No, uh, right, and when right, I say right, destroying, when I say destroying, right. we were not driving anywhere above forty miles per hour. <laughs> right? All right, all right, all right. Nowhere all right. above forty all miles right, per hour. Right, we were right, driving right. very in the calmly. Turns. Yeah. And, and then that smooth. moment when, when, when James is playing the DJ at the end and he's like, Oh, your I actors hope you are have made amazing. friends. I hope you have made family. Oh, yeah. I need to listen to this. I'm going to have to post that one. That's one that people have asked me for. What's so funny that you say that is that the I posted one. on the Run Rally group. We have a Run Rally group. If you've ever been to a Run Rally, you can join it. So that's kind of like your indoctrination. So you got to come to the next Run Rally, November 18th. Shameless plug. Uh, go to the runrally.com slash registration to register um, and check it out, and then you can get inducted into the family. But uh, what's so interesting, like I said, what you were saying is that I made a post after the, the ritual rites. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> in the group, I, I made a post. And I said, I said, I was listening to that one day, just sitting in the house while I was working. I said, but right before the last rally, I was like, this is the best rally CD we've done. And I, I asked people, what do you guys think about it? And some people were like, I haven't even heard it yet. Can I get it? And I, I felt like I was driving. Side. It's so good. And when we talk about. Immersion. I think it's our most heavily themed rally. Well, that's let's let's, let's get to the topic at Immersion, hand. Immersion, yeah. Immersion and escapism and escaping your reality and becoming becoming someone else so you can be the person you want to be in real life. Mm. Like that. You're 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 really you're really moving outside of yourself to go. Okay, I lived this person for a moment, and mm. now when I get to I get to bring these things that I learned from that character. I bring it back. It, it doesn't matter whether you're playing. I mean, look, we're we're nerds. Malcolm has Warhammer forty thousand. He has miniatures D &D up here. The D and D. Like, call me um, out. I wanted to see this background. He's like, yeah, uh, let me bring this. No, up. but here's the thing. I appreciate it as well. And I think once you lose the stigmatism that comes with board games that are not that's not chess, yeah. or like, oh, that's for kids, or playing Yu Gi Oh, or playing Pokemon, or playing, you know. What does it really mean to be a Pokemon master? To catch them all? Okay, no, I'm dead serious. Let's no, yeah, think about yeah, it. Let's yeah, think yeah. about it. As a child, you're playing Pokemon. You're trying to catch all these creatures. And it, one of the most amazing experiences in my life when I was a kid is playing with a Yu-Gi-Oh deck. And I do not care. I'm sh shameless in this. Playing with a Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Oh, I wasn't sh shameless in, in high school. They caught me. Uh, some <laughs> the, cool, the cool kids caught me. Oh, man. Um, but you know what? They accept it. They accept it after, yeah. uh, after uh, weeks of jokes. Um, but playing somebody with a more expensive deck, mm. playing with the, the, the hand that I was dealt, and in Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh was always the, the, the weaker dog. He's always like the lower, lower guy coming to the, the mm. deck, and they've always got, the other guys always got... So it's Ash and Pokemon. So it's so Ash, so it's... Because that's the story that we've been subscribed that, to a that, lot. Yeah, and, and, and the, one of the best things is, is playing Yu-Gi-Oh! with all your might and beating somebody who has a more expensive deck. And when you think about that in the grand scheme of life, there's some people who have a, an expensive deck. There's some people that are just a better shot. They have a better hand. Just 
you know, and then there's also some of that greener on the, the grass is greener on the side. We don't know what kind of, you know, their deck may look good, but like what other things are they dealing with? And it's really, you know, whether it's, you know, board games or it's, you know, a driving experience where you're trying to save, um, you know, save a chip that's going to fall into the, the wrong agent's hands and they're going to try to kill the president and you're going on, that was a run rally. Yeah. Uh, it was awesome. It was like a James Bond one. Uh-huh. And um, those types of things put you in someone else's shoes. Mm. And when you come back out of that, you go, because not, not all of it is like goody two-shoe stuff. And some of there's some gray areas. And from these books that we read. And to put this in context yeah. for people who've never been to a run rally, because I want yeah, you yeah, to continue. Yeah, no, I want you to put it, just to put it in context, is let's not even talk about the run rallies. It's if you've ever been to Disneyland, mm. been to Universal mm-hmm. Studios. Um, Every time you go to a movie theater and you pay twelve dollars, you are escaping. So if those people think that it's just a run rally escape, that's it's a car themed event where we try to create that. We try to take those elements from Disneyland and immerse people in that. But for you to understand, yeah. every time you like that, every time you go to the movie theater, we're trying to escape. When you go home and you when you go to work for your eight hour day and you ask a friend, "Hey, did you watch the next episode of Game of Thrones?" Well, you're a grown ass person watching an hour long <laughs> series about dragons. And dragons. Goddamn like, you're watching Political Intrigue with Dragons Attached, so you can watch, you can watch CNN and Fox. Yeah. <laughs> but you, what you decided to do right. was turn to Game of Thrones so that you can escape. Yeah. And so we're all trying to escape, and I think with Matthew... So I wanted, I wanted, I didn't want your no, words no. to be lost. You're right. I, I'm actually about, done because I... So, I, but it actually makes perfect I'm sense. I'm long-winded. I'm very long-winded, and I have a scatterbrain, and I'll just... Uh, I wanted the words to be... that you Because you kept mentioning the run rally, so I wanted people to not be like, I don't understand him because I don't understand the run rally. Oh, very good, very good, very good. And you can understand what you're saying based I'm gonna back on off, but anything that yeah. you attach yeah. yourself to. Yeah, because eventually this guy walks out of the, the head to experience <laughs> something else, but he's got to go back in. Yeah. Right. You've got to go back to your job. You've got to go back to your your wife and your kids, uh, or your husband, and you've got to go back to what um, what it means to be a human being and 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 to live as proper as you feel that you should. Um, it goes back. You have to go back to your morals and your um, your faith or your faith your non faith. You got to go back to all that stuff that. People may ridicule you about, or people, or you may not feel comfortable about yourself about some of these things. Right. Or maybe you want to lose a little weight. Maybe you want to gain some weight. Maybe you want to be a better speaker. Maybe, and when you role play, which mm-hmm. is kind of what you're doing yeah. at the movies, or or because you're putting yourself in that person's shoes, mm-hmm. or at the rally, um, you know, you're when you role play. You it's just like when you watch a movie, you can't people say I didn't like that movie because I couldn't relate. It means you couldn't see yourself as the character. That's deep. It means you couldn't role play yeah. while you're watching the movie. And everybody play. wants to role play. Yeah, right. They want to get something out that they didn't get before, or they want to massage something that they already know that they can do. They maybe they just need a little bit more yeah. extra uh, encouragement or confirmation. So, you know. So, so how do you escape? So I, I actually, I so I would uh, to that end. I would also some people are afraid to do that. Though. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I feel like, um, like, like I know my mom too. Like, um, and I, I don't want to put her on blast. But no, like there no. are some people too that just probably like five people have ever watched this. Right, I think she's not gonna be on blast. Right, <laughs> but like, but like, uh, but one day, right? Well, Maybe. yeah, that was but um, um, she's gonna be like googling my name, like looking <laughs> on the interwebs. Antonio Banderas. <laughs> You know, I, hate, I hate myself right now. Oh my god. All the things I said I was I told him was not gonna do okay. He said this before he's like, he's like, hey man, I, I had some think. jokes for you. And we're like, hey, we shouldn't man. do that. And he did it. And it's great because the j- Again. I blame it on castmates. Yeah, blame it on castmates. Right, so. It'll give you the greatest time. Right. Yeah. No, but no, no, for you so and all them. your interracial <laughs> Um yeah, but I feel like some people are afraid to escape too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they, they're afraid to push the envelope because it takes them too outside of the norm. And maybe it goes back to how they were raised or brought up. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, the, the apple falls, falls where it falls. And like, yeah. I'm not, you know, I don't think none of us here s- sitting here right now are afraid to push the envelope and be mm-hmm. yeah. outside the box, right? Um, 
but it's, it's a curious thing, right? Like why someone might be a little bit afraid to escape reality because maybe they feel out of control. Yeah. I know that's where um, I know my mom and some mm -hmm. other people might feel a little bit of discomfort is they feel like they're out of control. Yeah. Um, mm. Because it's too different from what's normal. Right. Right. Um, but when you think about it, this life that we live that's normal is really weird. It's mm -hmm. crazy. If you were to look at it from like an outside perspective. I agree with you. It's all this shit that we do is super weird. Yeah. And it's normal to us. It's all we know. Right. But, um, so trying to escape that, I feel like it's an honorable thing and, and, and it's not necessarily a weak scene. thing. It's not, it's not, a, it's not something that's weak mm -hmm. to do. Cause I think when you hear escapism, it sounds like you're running from your problems. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what it sounds like. And, and I think I, everybody... some people can escape and run away from their problems in a negative way. Yeah. Right. I don't, I'm not doing it to get away from problems. I'm no. doing it to, Become I think, I think what I'm trying to prove is that we all escape to make life worth living in a strange yeah. way like so without, i mean i mean it's like it's not like it's a a, a form of weakness like you're running right. away from your, your problems, problems. Yeah. that's not what we're talking about no. i mean i don't even know what escapism like the actual dictionary webster's dictionary like definition is but the escapism that we're talking about mm -hmm. is this kind of this, this thing that we do every day this thing that's kind of involved in like uh the the theming of this rally and, you know, I think you were touching on that, that, like, people, you may not be brought up this way right. to, like, or feeling out of right. control or maybe feeling weak right. because you're doing it. And I think what you said, it was maybe in the first, like, ten minutes of this, was we're not um, escaping to be less like ourselves or to be mm. outside of reality. We're, we're escaping to be more... To find ourselves. To find ourselves, right? To be more like ourselves. And I think that's where people get lost is... Um, and that's where it takes sort of a dark turn is when you escape to uh, be unlike yourself to completely disconnect yeah. from yourself, and that's not that's not. We're trying to escape way. to be our better self, right? And because yeah. that's what's required. That's at least I right. think that's what's necessary. Sometimes. Right. With all of the noise, everything that's going on mm -hmm. around us, um, I feel like in order to yeah better yourself to push the envelope to um, be more self-actualized. I feel like uh, you need to, um, to a certain extent, um, disconnect in a way that is not um, not completely uh, downplaying reality necessarily, mm -hmm. right? Um, and not shunning it, but mm -hmm. it's um, it's putting you in a different frame of reference or different like a state of mind yeah. that allows you to um, to just see things. Um, I think for what they are. I agree. I think for what they really mm. are, and and because we, we, it's interesting the the way that we're brought up and the way that we enter this life. It's 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 a preset, um, mm -hmm. sort of stage for us. Right. And um, and everything around us has been you know life goes on. And it's constantly in motion. Mm -hmm. Um, and so. Every once in a while, we need a the opportunity to break away from that and really find ourselves. Yeah. And I feel like that's escapism. I don't feel like it's, um, I don't feel like it's really bashing reality so much as it is uh, mm. realizing the true reality that's around us that sometimes gets drowned out. Wow. Mm. And uh, I, I feel like the little the, things that matter. The things that, that matter. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's it's powerful that you say that, and I know we need to wrap up soon. Uh, but I, you, I can't help but listening to you think about and listening to Matthew, think about like, like I said, like what really matters, and what matters to me is like camaraderie and friendship and these amazing moments. Because for me, I always feel like I feel like one of the worst things to have like, is it Parkinson's that where you start to cut? No, that's not. Uh, what is it where you kind of lose? It's, your, um, is it Jameson? And, and, Jameson and Casper. Like amnesia. Jameson Casper. One of the diseases, the disease where you kind of start Am to lose amnesia. your not mm -hmm. amnesia. You can lose your memory, but no, no. I know no, what you're talking about. That where you actually start dementia. To lose, um, oh, yeah. You start to lose your it. your memories, your full self, and it's permanent. Um, I thought that was like Alzheimer's. 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 There Alzheimer's. There was. And I. And that's 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 scary to me because I think mm -hmm. living without your memories, what what are Why you? Why really? are you? Yeah. And I know that's we all we're, think about it. What are we on the What are we on the gram for? What are we on? Facebook? We're trying to capture these memories right. and compartmentalize them so that we can continuously remember who we are. Right. And I think that's why I create this. I 
these experiences are not to escape, not to escape my terrible reality. When I just create the run, I feel like my life is pretty good. But now I want to like, I want to like, I want to step outside of myself and experience this crazy fantasy life that, that, that's a step above, right? Um, but at the same token, when Matt said escapism, he said typically people are trying to run from themselves. I thought about I looked up the definition, and it does say, the tendency to seek distraction or relief from unpleasant realities, especially by seeking entertainment or engaging in fantasy. Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, I don't find myself doing that as much anymore. But I think about who I was. I think about me and you and us growing up. Growing up in Inglewood and growing up during the time when I at least grew up when there was like a the blood and the crip war was really big. There was a lot of gangbanging going on. There was a lot of... And people always ask me like why I'm not this... For me, I, in a strange way, being a geek kind of saved me. Mm. I escaped. So I never saw any of that around me. I never worried about it because I was, maybe I was like... Maybe I was too busy in my in my own head. And by being in my own head, I never got... I never got distracted by anything else. So in a strange way, being in this fantasy world kept me out of being in my reality. And gave you a pass in the hood. Yeah, true. It gave you a pass. Like, cats would see you, and they would step to you, and totally somebody, in the, somebody in the group would be like, oh, no, that's just Malcolm. He plays with cards. Like He plays it, that. Yeah. Or he's one of... He play, at that time, it was Paul. Yeah, Paul. His like, spawn comic books. Just like, <laughs> that was you really may get bullied a little bit, but right for now. the most part, back in the day... Yeah. You know, the the cult the gang culture wasn't really like like what we're seeing in Chicago is, is yeah. it's very different. But oh, back in the day when we were growing up in Inglewood, with the gang culture it's still like the OGs and they they had they, they had some moral value they had some moral There was a code. There's a code like, oh you don't mess with him because he's not really about that life. Right. If you're not about that life and you don't do anything disrespectful then we may just take your shoes. <laughs> right. You know, we may just take the shirt off your back or yeah. we may jump you a little bit, but we're not going to really hurt you or yeah. really attack you. So in a way, us being nerds, right? You know, what is a nerd? What is a geek? You know, us, I guess, if you want to say thinking outside the box, right, is actually the thing that, that, that kept us on the path of becoming who we are today, you know? So maybe we were escaping all that time, and a little way it was working. We were escaping, but we weren't escaping. Right. We were actually becoming who we were. And the truth of the matter is, is that it's a lie perpetuated uh, against, you know, within the b black community and within yeah. mul multiple, uh, many different communities that, you know, um, different cultures aren't really into this stuff. You ask yeah. any black guy who Goku is, he's going to tell you who he is. That's absolutely true. They will. Goku, Naruto. There was a lot, a lot of, there's a lot of gangbangers I knew growing up. And on the side, they would whisper like, oh yeah, that Dragon Ball Z shit, that's that. Yeah. But they, but they didn't feel comfortable. Remember you were talking about like how you grew up. Yeah. Maybe around their friends, they didn't feel comfortable saying, hey, I like this thing. I think everybody likes escapism. I think everybody yeah. wants to do it. I think everybody does it. And whether you do it secretly or openly is really the only question. If you just watch TV. If you're an avid television watcher and, and you watch series, at least you watch television shows about fictional characters, you are an escapist. <laughs> if you, like, that's what I'm never saying. Like, and, and I know we need to wrap up, and we'll make this really quick. But like, if, like I said, I always, I've always told you this. If they're the same people at work who tell me, you play Dungeons and Dragons, or you've played Dungeons and Dragons, but I'll go, well, you paid $15 to go see Christian Bell dress up in a rubber suit? Right. As Batman, so it's okay if he does it as long as he gets paid a few million, right, to do it. It's the strange. It's accepted. It's an accepted thing in our culture, right. but they're just playing make believe. They're doing the same thing for money, but something about our culture says if you get paid for it, it's okay. But those same people, a lot of those actors, what makes them kind of crazy is they grew up kind of wanting to like be be different right. people and try out being trying on different shoes. So it's a real cool thing. We right. could probably go on forever. You. So let's hear your last one last thing with that, yeah. I'd like to clarify something. So I guess it's not. So much people being afraid of es of escapism, it's afraid to to put that out there. Mm. Yes, you know? mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Because isn't like uh, isn't like a gang, right, or like any other type of uh, offshoot community, uh, some sort of escape from something. Mm -hmm. Right. That's deep. It already is an uh, an escape wow. in a way to protect themselves from whatever they're. Hey, 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 right. Good job. Good job. You know, it's the end of the yeah, show, so but you still need to <laughs> still need to talk still about. going. This is... You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, this is going to continue after the show. Uh, but, um, and I, I hate to say this again. It sounds like I'm just plugging because it's my brother, but I really do love the, the Run Rally, which is 
um, an incredible experience. I've seen guys who just love cars. They're like manly guys, you know, type A, alpha male. I've got my Mustangs, got 800 million horses, and I want to bring it to the rally. And I don't know what is going on with this like theatrical bullshit, but you know, I'm, I'm the man. And then they experience the run rally. They are doing something, they're low-key involved in something that they said that they would never be a part of. Like, I, you know, dress up or costume. You don't have to dress up or be in a costume, but you are, you're role-playing. You, you end up, you end up role-playing, you end up kind of, um, uh, uh, kind of playing like a, I like to, more I like, so in thought than action. Yeah, in, in thought. You're not actually role playing. It's like not you're role playing when you get on a ride at Universal Studios. Exactly. Like, you're you're acting. You don't have to like, do anything, but like if you're, you're just on in your ride mind. with the Transformers, you're like, I'm, I'm so, a part I'm of this. Prime is like, you helped me save the city. Thank you, Zach. Yes. <laughs> you aren't role playing in the sense that you have lines to deliver, but you're role playing in the sense that you got into a car on the Transformers ride. And you are helping Optimus Prime. You're not doing anything. <laughs> you're you're not doing nothing. But you are in this ride, and you are helping somehow save the Allspark. Yeah. And that's what how the Run Rally works. And I've seen these guys who seemingly are just like not into that actually come back again mm -hmm. and again and be more excited every single time we see them and be involved in more things. Like, hey, Malcolm. Hey, I looked into that. Uh, you know that uh, that that magic game, or I looked into that. I looked into this or that. But you know what I'm saying. I, I know. In, I know what you mean. I like, looked into more things it, it, it that are outside of my stuff. comfort zone. Yeah. Which I thought that I would never be a part of, but like, it's not so bad. Yeah. And really, limiting our experiences is a terrible thing to do, because we, at the end of the day, I agree with that 100. Becoming a creative. Hmm. See, it, we're taught that like there's creatives. There's, there's just only a couple, you know. You know, Steve Jobs are creative. Yeah. But or that we're taught that like we aren't creative. We we're aren't supposed crea to consume from creative. We're, we're supposed to consume on the, the side just for entertainment, and that's it. We, we are all can, can be a part of the creative. Kind of add to that. Yeah. I mean, some may be more than others, and some may be more gifted. Uh, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, so I just want to say, I just want to say that that after talking about all that and how like you become to expand your horizons, I've actually seen it. Yep. happen when you just when you when people actually just do it yeah i've really enjoyed this like i hope yeah. that I, i'm gonna continue to do this i hope that we can continue to do this i thank you for being oh, here matthew oh, thank love you, you bro i appreciate thank love you, you brother. love you man too absolutely hey, both of you guys bro i just met you today you're a boss yeah. appreciate yeah. you no, likewise. Appreciate so likewise. we got a good, good fan talks, here good talks, good talks. Um, we'll bring more people on the show and hopefully you guys like it and just the few people that do know me this is, you know, starting for shit's good. Sometimes you just, we have a lot of good conversation and you get to a point you go, hey, I just want to put that out there. I just want to let people. I want other people to be a part of this. Just be a part of it. Yeah, let us know what you think. Like, what's your favorite car movie? What's your favorite, what do you think about, you know, Baby Driver? What do you think about you drive being a creative? What kind of music do you listen to when you drive? These are a lot of things that we discussed today that uh, you can kind of continue to create a conversation with us on. And uh, I mean, you even got me already thinking about the next episode, talking about my buddy uh, D, who's created an amazing oh, board man, game, man, but grew man. up in like grew, grew up in Compton and created this amazing game that he goes to all these game awesome. board games. Uh, he goes to like the board game convention, so I'm gonna have him one. And none of and none of his personality is lost. No, yeah, I mean, you would never know. You would never you know. know. These are guys that that snuck. D and D comic book, D and D books, there's the rule books into their backpacks on the way to school. I feel like there's and a hit them from gangbangers. Like, I feel like that's a movie in and of itself. Yeah, you know? it's just this, it, it's yeah. another side of like being a geek in America that no one knows mm. about. We're gonna, we're gonna expose that here on the Gentleman Geek. Yeah. So we hope to see you next time. Uh, follow us, subscribe, and uh, we'll also since we talked a lot about the run rally, we'll throw up a, a link somewhere around here that you can click right. and watch the trailer. <laughs> Alright, thanks guys, thanks for watching.